Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Vegas Nose Podcast. I'm Mark Givler. I'm joined by Bill Green, as always. We have another slate of college games this weekend to go over and some more NFL stuff. I think uh, pretty interesting first weekend with with not a lot of marquee matchups, made for some interesting lines. Uh, I kind of took the cowardly way out last week. I uh, picked just the Iowa State game. Iowa State minus, I believe it was 11 and a half. That was obviously a huge fail. <laughs> so I am uh, 0-1 on the podcast picks. Um, so it's going to be an interesting week again. we got a very similar uh, slate this week with, with not a lot of marquee matchups. You know, Big Ten's now officially back, but that won't be kicking off for about another month. SEC is still a bit away. So we got some weird matchups this weekend. Um, you know, do you see anything out there, Bill? Yeah, like I say, uh, last week I ended up uh, went two and one on the podcast. Had an earlier loss when I took Navy when they got demolished. So two and two on the season. This card this week will be the worst card of the season by far. Um, Last week was, you know, it wasn't the greatest, but it was better than this. So, like I say, one of the mistakes that I've made in the past and I think a lot of people make is they kind of see what happened last week and then they totally move off from what they thought. And I'm not going to do that. So this week I've got four picks in the college and two of them I'm going right back to schools that I lost with earlier. So the, the one I like the best this week is Notre Dame. And I had them last week over Duke. I didn't think they played all that well, but I think Duke is a lot better than people thought they were going to be. So this week, Notre Dame minus 25 over South Florida. I don't think South Florida can throw the football worth a darn. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball on Notre Dame. I think Brian Kelly will have his team's attention this week in practice. I think teams take a leap, uh, good teams from week one to week two in the season. And I just think Notre Dame – is going to beat South Florida about 45 to 10 here. I think it's a total ass whipping. So I'm, I'm rolling back with Notre Dame. They cost me last week. I think they're good. I think Ian books good. I think their defense is really good. So I'm rolling with them again. I'm also wheeling back again with Navy against uh, Tulane. Navy's getting seven points. I know they got murdered by BYU week one. Again, I think, You'll get that team's attention all week in practice. Both teams have about similar starters back, and Navy has beaten them, I think, three of the last four years. So I'm going back here with Navy. I'm going to take the seven points. I think if Navy wouldn't have got killed so bad week one, I think this would be a pick game or maybe Navy favored. So I'll take the seven with Navy. I think they can win the game outright. Um, so I'm rolling with that. Those are two teams that I lost with earlier. I'm coming right back with them. Another game I really like is I like Houston getting four points against Baylor. Baylor's got that new staff. They had no spring practice. They've had a lot of problems down there with the COVID. Um, Houston in the second year of Dana Holgerson. I don't know if people remember it, but, but last year he redshirted a ton of seniors. He knew they were going to be bad last year and took his lumps, redshirted guys to get him stronger, get him into his program. I mean, Dana knows offense, and they're going to score. So I'm going to take Houston plus four against Baylor. Um, And then my last pick, I'm taking Louisville at home Saturday night. They're laying two points against Miami. Kind of worried about that one because – I think Derek King has really infused Miami with some juice. But I just think both teams have about the same amount of starters back. And I think Satterfield will coach Manny Diaz, and they'll win the game, hopefully by more than two and a half. So those are my picks, Mark. I'm going Notre Dame, minus 25, Navy plus seven, Houston plus four, and Louisville minus two and a half. So – those are my four, dude. So what do you got this week? Well, just like last week, you have more guts than me because I don't like the <laughs> slate enough to play three or four games again. Um, 
Yeah, I, I my one pick last week was a total fail. I did that was on the podcast. I did have the Miami game. The Miami minus sixteen did hit for me uh, before we were or as as we were starting to record. Actually, I believe uh, that game was still going on last week when we were recording. Um, but you know, for for the purposes of this podcast, I'm zero and one right now. So um, I, you know, again, I look at this slate of games and I just yuck. Um, I like your Navy pick. I'm not going to tail you on it, but I do like it. I think I think that's a good one. Um, the the one I look at, and this is probably the least sexy game of the weekend, and I, I contemplated taking them uh, last week and didn't. Is uh, is Clemson minus 45 against the Citadel? I don't think you could put that line high enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, like at, at what? How many how many points would you have to be giving the Citadel before you just took the points on that one? I think you'd probably have to give me about sixty or seventy points before I considered taking the Citadel. So I'm gonna go with Clemson beating the Citadel somewhere in the neighborhood of like fifty, you know, fifty six to three or something like that. <laughs> um, so I've got Clemson minus forty five. Um, you know wow. this this I don't love this pick, but I'm making it anyway, which is you know insane logic but you know when you're struggling to find games you like and you want to have a little bit of action you you, you got to reach i guess um i'm going to take boston college plus 6 at duke this weekend i'm a big jeff halfley believer i think they've got some infusion of talent there uh, i think they're going to be jacked up to play um so you're they're getting almost a touchdown i think they could win the game outright um, you know, I guess the biggest question from, from last week is, is Duke better than we thought or did Notre Dame just not play very well? Um, I'm leaning more towards Notre Dame just didn't play very well. Um, I, I think Boston college, um, plus six is, is, is the smart play of, of the two picks here. I don't know. I mean, taking Duke to cover, to cover six against another, you know, conference foe. I, I just don't know that I can do that at this point. Um, I, my only uh, my only drawback on this pick is going to be that you know Duke did have you know a very nice you know, I don't call it tune up they 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 lost to Notre Dame last week but that that's that's a heck of a way to get your season started so I think they are probably further along right now than maybe Boston College just because of having that game against Notre Dame under their belt but um, yeah I'm on the Halfley train. I think, uh, again, I think they've infused some talent in the, in the transfer portal this offseason. Um, so I, I think maybe a little more high scoring than people imagine it might be. Uh, maybe you know, something where, you know, something in the 31-28 type of range, something like that. Boston College, either, you know, whether they win or lose by field goals is, is irrelevant to me. Just want to cover those six. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, that that's my other pick. Uh, I'm going to give the same disclaimer as last week. I don't love any of these. So <laughs> uh, whatever your smallest unit is, put that on these games. <laughs> that's That would be my advice. Um, but, yeah, those, those are the two. Um, you know, I'm curious, but what do you think about uh, the Boston College game? Just because, uh, you know, you you obviously covered Jeff Halfley as well. And yeah. I'm just kind of curious what your thoughts are on that team this year. Yeah, I, um, I, I agree with you. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a really good game. You know, does Duke have a little letdown, you know, coming off that game last week? When they went into Notre Dame, played really well. I just – kind of felt there that the only thing scared me was Duke having played a game and Boston College not having played a game. But, I, you know, I'm with you with the points there. If I had to take something there, I would definitely take BC. Um, so I'm with you. But like I say, I'm with you on, like, I, I bet every game I give out, I actually bet it myself. Um, but the college football right now, you know, these are about the smallest wagers I could make right now. Um, just I don't just know keeping myself entertained right at now. this point. No real, no, no real dollar value. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously I'm no. going to bet the games, but no, no, I am not loading up on any yeah. of these yet. <laughs> no, no, no. I lost, you know, I just, you know, I lost money on Ohio state last year against Clemson and I lost money that, you know, I had tears after that game. You know, that was that was costly. That was money. These are not real money. I could go 0-4 in these bets right here and, you know, 
you know, lose about the same amount of money the paper boy makes a week. So I'm not firing yet till I get to see a little bit more, but I want action. This is what I'm going with. And, you know, so I think people should know that, man. I mean, right now it's just kind of crazy um, to go, to go off betting a lot of money and I'm not going to. So anyway, moving on to the NFL, you had a great NFL Sunday last week. So why don't you kind of recap that first here? Yes, I did have a great NFL Sunday. I went three and one on my picks. Um, I got what I deserved in terms of betting on the Browns. Um, so I that, was with you. Yeah, I was right there you know, with you. When when you when you do that and they get their teeth kicked in, you, you just you, all you can do is laugh and say, "You dummy! Why did you do that?" You know. So, um, but. I did have uh, I did have a very strong week. I had uh, Washington plus six against the Eagles. I had no faith the Eagles patchwork offensive line was going to hold up against uh, the re- the football team's <laughs> defensive line. Um, and even when the Eagles were up seventeen nothing, that was correct. Uh, there was one drive in the first half where the Eagles scored. The, the Eagles gave up three sacks and scored a touchdown. <laughs> so yeah. even when they were scoring, they weren't blocking Washington. It was the most bizarre thing. You know, I, I some one of you stat heads that's listening to this podcast, please look up the last time an NFL team has held a seventeen nothing lead in the first half of a football game where they've given up five sacks. I would love to know the stat wow. of that because wow. it was it was smoke and mirrors there. And then the whole thing fell apart in the second half, obviously. And not only did they cover the plus six, they, they won the game outright by what, by 10, I believe. So uh, that was um, obviously a strong pick. I had the, uh, I had the Raiders minus three, which against the Panthers, which looked great the entire way and then fell apart in the fourth quarter and then, and then came back to cover. So that was, uh, that was fun. And then I had a, uh, a very comfortable uh, under Patriots Dolphins 42. That was about as comfortable a win as you're going to get doing this. Um, never had to sweat it. Um, what was the final on that one? Like 24, 11 or something like that, but it never even, right, got, right. It never even got close though. I mean, it was, it was a couple late points there. It was, it was an easy cover. Um, so I see a few more I like this week. I, I don't know if I love the slate as much as I did last week. I actually really liked my picks last week. Um, you know, I like them this week. I don't, I, I don't, maybe don't love them quite as much, but, um, you know, uh, Bill, how many do you have this week? Do you have three or kind of, we can, uh, maybe go I did. back and forth. Yeah, I do have three this week. Uh, okay. I went, uh, right now I'm two, two and one for the year. I went one, two and one on the podcast and had an earlier pick uh, the over in the Kansas City on Monday night, which went over by a miracle. So NFL is not my strong point at all. Love betting it. Love it, but not very good at it year after year and readily admit that I'm, I'm a 500 picker at best in the NFL. But I do have three I like this week. Okay, well, let's go. Um, let's start with you, and we'll just alternate. I think we did oh, okay. that last week with our NFL games. You give me, you know, your first pick. I'll give then I'll give my first pick, and we'll just kind of go back and forth here and and kind of see. And, and Bill and I don't discuss these before we get on. We, we right. want this to be right. we want this to be pretty unfiltered and and unscripted. So, um, you know, I I know last week we did have the one overlap, which was was our probably our worst <laughs> bet of the week. I killed. Um, but um, yeah, so you know, Bill, what, what's your? Uh, I guess what's your first one here? What's your top top pick? Well, you're going to be really conflicted with this pick because I don't think you're going to agree with it, but I think you're going to want me to win it. I'm taking Philly this week. They cannot possibly play as horrible as they played last week. I know that it looks like Aaron Donald will set the sack record by halftime this week. I don't. I don't believe in the Rams. Uh, I think McCarthy blew that game last week for Dallas Rams coming cross country to play an Eagles team that has to really be ticked off for that garbage performance last week against the Redskins. So I'm taking Philly this week. That line started out. Philly was favored. I think by two and a half, they're now getting points. So people are betting the Rams like that game is over. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Uh, Travel across country for the Rams has not been good for them, and I think it continues to not be good this week. I can't believe Philly is this bad, and I can't believe they're bad enough that it can't be fixed the week of practice, and I'm taking Philly this week over the Rams. 
And I'm sure you're probably taking the Rams, but you probably want me to win this one. So I'm actually staying away from this game. <laughs> and um, before I get into my first pick, I'm going to explain that a little bit. Um, anyone who's watched the Eagles during the Doug Peterson era knows that whenever they just lay an egg like last week, People write them off. They'll play a much better team the next week. And they will, they'll like, they'll probably play their best game of the season on Sunday. <laughs> um, I'm they, hoping for that. Yeah. They're going to get Miles Sanders back, it looks like. He didn't play last week. They should have Lane Johnson available, it looks like. He didn't play last week. They're going to get some guys back. I would certainly hope they're pissed off um because that was garbage last week that was even worse than i thought it would be and i thought it wouldn't be pretty so for that reason i'm staying away from that because my my what i saw last week makes me want to crush the rams here but i also know that these are the types of games the eagles are are maddening and and so this is the type of game they could go out there and win by 10 on on sunday and it wouldn't shock me so i I got to lay back on this one. I, I'm, I'm pretty darn good at actually betting Eagles games. I, I seem to have their, the pulse on things most of the time. I've, of course, I don't hit every single one. But when it comes to kind of weeding out the, the good and the bad lines with the Eagles games, I, I'm usually pretty good at that. I was, obviously was able to do that last week. And this week, I'm just I'm running away from that. Um, so my first pick – kind of staying with what we're talking about with the Rams, Eagles, the NFC East, all that good stuff. I am taking the Cowboys uh, minus four and a half at home against the Falcons. Um, You know, these teams like Dallas and Philly, these are must win. I mean, you don't want to start 0-2. It it puts you in such a hole. I thought Dallas certainly played well enough to win last week. Probably should have won that game. Um so many weapons on that offense. Uh, I make fun of Dak a little bit. It's not that I don't think he's a good player. I just think he's not in the elite tier. People put him in a lot. I think he's a, a kind of a middle of the pack NFL starting quarterback, but um, I, I just think there's so many weapons on that team. I think their defense is, is good. Um, I, I just still not a believer in that Falcons team. I think they kind of are what they are at this point. I think they've kind of proven that the last couple of years. I think the Super Bowl years are, are very much in the rear view there. And so uh, I think uh, Dallas bounces back, wins, you know, maybe a touchdown, maybe 10 points, covers that four and a half. Uh, four and a half is usually actually a, a line that Vegas puts out when they just have no freaking idea what's going to happen. That's, that's like no man's land, that four and a <laughs> half, five or whatever. It's like total no man's land. I think Dallas by a touchdown or more. That's my first pick. Bill, what's your second pick? I am actually going to go with the Detroit Lions. I thought they played really well last week against Chicago. They were, the, they were clearly the better team, in my opinion. Gacked it up in the end horribly. But I think they're pretty good. And I don't believe in Green Bay. I didn't believe in them last year when they won a million games. So I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take six and a half points with Detroit here, and um, I think they're going to keep it close. I think they can win. Um, like I say, they 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 were the better team last week against the Bears, and win or lose, I'm going down with the Lions this week. I think Stafford will have a big day. I think it'll be a back and forth game. Could be an overtime game, field goal game, but I'm going to take those six and a half points here. Last week was. You know, we all we make fun of, we make fun of franchises like the Browns and the Bengals and the Lions, and they all kind of did classic versions of themselves last week. I actually do like that. Right? Too. They were Detroit, right. Detroit just for you know, they just Detroited. I, I, that's all they did. They they Detroited last week. I, I don't know how. I mean, that was that was total domination. Really, they were fantastic for what three quarters there, and it just the no doubt came off. No doubt. Um, so that's that, that's a good pick. I don't. It's not on my card, but that's kind of like with you with the Boston College game. If if you put if you made me bet that if you made me pick that game, that I would take the points. 
Um, I am going to take the points here. And this, God, this is such a sucker bet. So I'm just, I'm going on record right now admitting that I'm falling for the sucker bet of the week. So I, you know, I always make fun of people who fall for the sucker bet. So I'm going to make fun of myself preemptively here. I'm taking the Vikings plus three at the Colts. There's, there's just no reason for me to believe the Colts are a better team than the Vikings. Um, Philip Rivers looks, my goodness, can he throw a football more than 25 yards at this point? I mean, he just looks, am I crazy? Does he, Philip Rivers looks done to me. Um, well, he's Vikings, looked that way for the last year and a half. He's looked done. I, I think I he looks believe. done. I think Vikings have a good defense. And I think, right? again, that's a team that, that's a team that needs to win this week after Aaron Rodgers torched them. Um, I'm, I got Vikings bouncing back, not only covering plus three, I'd probably, would, you know, if I had to pick who's going to win the game, I'd pick the Vikings to win the game. So I'm going to take the three points. I think Phillip Rivers has been done for a while now. I couldn't believe Indy signed him. I didn't think Jacoby Brissett was all that bad last year. So, yeah, I uh, I was shocked at the Vikings last week. They're too good to play like that. They're they're a better team. So, I'm, I like it. I didn't take them. If I had to take them, I would take them. My last game is the one I like the best, and it's going against, you know, a team that I, I, I really – wouldn't say I like them, but yet I know people inside the organization and they do everything right. And there's a reason they win all the time, but I think this team stinks. And I think New England, I respect them. I respect Belichick, that staff. I think they're terrible. I think they played awful last week against Miami. They're catching four points. I, I can't remember the last time Seattle or, or New England got four points from anyone in an NFL game. And I think Seattle's going to murder them. Uh, New England going across the country, flying across the country to play Seattle. I think Russell Wilson's going to carve them up. I don't think Cam Newton running the JT Barrett offense is going to score any points at all against Seattle. I don't think New England can throw the football. I don't think they have any receivers that can threaten Seattle. I think this is going to be a total butt kick in here. I'm looking for Seattle to beat New England 35-17. I think it'll be easy. I think the fact that Vegas is throwing that four out there for you uh, makes it pretty easy to take New England. And I, I, this is my play of the week, college or pro. I think Seattle is going to beat the dog out of New England. Now, you had Seattle. Didn't Seattle cover for you last yeah. week as a favorite? Yeah. Yep, yep. I had him over Atlanta. I couldn't understand that line. Atlanta ended up being favored in that game. Yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, Matt Rock. I mean, what does Russell Wilson have to do to get some respect? It's kind of crazy. He, I mean, he's incredible. He's an incredible player, and no one ever, you know, he he never gets picked on any of these lists. People never, you know, the lines never seem to really respect Seattle on some of these games. It's wild to me. To me, he's he's as good a player in football as there is. I know people like Mahomes. For a while, they like Lamar Jackson. You know, to me, Russell Wilson is the ultimate winner. I think he's tremendous. I think this is the year, too, where it looks like finally Pete Carroll is going to give up on running the ball for three quarters and then either being behind or being in a close game, and then you turn Russell loose in the fourth quarter and he wins the game for you. Well, turn him loose from the time they play the anthem and put the ball in the tee. And I think they did that last week, and I like it. I like Russell Wilson. Man, forget that establishing that running game. Let Russell play wide open. Let him try to score 35 or 40. So I think Seattle pointing upwards, New England pointing downwards, travel across the country, not buying it. Um, I'm, I'm living, living and dying with Russell Wilson here. Wow. All right. Well, here's a game I like quite a bit, and I might be getting suckered into this based off of just how pathetic they were last week. <laughs> but um, I've, I, boy, I love San Francisco minus seven at the Jets. Uh, I, yeah, I know they're, you know, traveling across country. Um, I think the Jets stink. I, <laughs> I watched almost, I watched probably 80% of that San Francisco, Arizona game. Last week, I think Arizona, and I'm going to be eating some crow on this, I think. I think Kyler Murray and, and Arizona are actually a legitimate team this year. I, I was 
I've always made fun of that franchise and I've made fun of the Kingsbury hire and I'm not con- totally conceding that one yet, but um, I think Arizona is a good team this year. I think, you know, 49ers, it's, it's, it's really, you know, you got the Super Bowl hangover stuff. There, there, there's some stuff there, but ultimately the 49ers need to win this week in that division starting 0 and 2, I think is a death sentence. Um, they need to win. They're playing a horrendous team who made a terrible pick of Sam Darnold as a quarterback. I don't think Sam Darnold can play. I think he, you know, he, to me, he's a bottom couple court, but bottom two or three starting quarterback in the NFL at this point. Um, you have a great defensive line. You should dominate that game. Probably not going to be super high scoring. I know there's some concern around George Kittle. I, I know, you know, the 49ers offensively probably have some question marks. But I just – I see San Francisco winning that game. So, I mean, I, to me, they're a rich man's Buffalo, and, you know, we saw what happened last week. So, you know, why doesn't San Francisco win this game 28 to 10? You know, I, I just – I don't see them losing this game. Um, gosh, I'd be so – I'd be so surprised if they didn't come out and win that game handily. That's my – that's probably uh, – that's probably my favorite play of the week. Um, I, again, I just – I know it's a lot of points in the NFL for a road team, but I just I, I can't wrap my brain around the 49ers laying an egg against a, a team as bad as the Jets. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, any yeah, parting no, thoughts no, here? No, or anything? no, no, that's about it for me. Like I say, I, uh, I looked at a lot of different games, and those were the three I really isolated on. And like I say, I am not – going to pose myself as any NFL expert at all. And, you know, I've kind of proven that with the track record going back. So college, I feel pretty confident, you know, that I can have a winning year. I've had four of them in a row and I expect to have this number five, but NFL man, not exactly my, my gig. Yeah. I mean, good chance I get humbled this week. Um, (laughs) Really strong week opening week last week. Um, Of course the Browns, my only loss, um, but a uh, strong chance I get humbled. Um, again, I'm staying away from, from the Eagles game, uh, even though my spidey sense is that, Bill, you're right on that. My, my, my sense is that I mean, these are just watching these teams. They're so mad. The Eagles have been so maddening the last couple of years uh, since they won the Super Bowl. Since Super Bowl year, they've been totally unpredictable. They've lost games you couldn't believe they would lose. They've won games when people have just completely written them off. Um, and giving them no chance and, and teams that, you know, beating teams on paper, they had no business beating. Um, so it it's on, it's very on brand if the Eagles win this week. So I'm running far away from that game, but I, <laughs> I suspect we're going to come back on Monday and Bill may have been right. And the Eagles are going to be one and one <laughs> right back in it after, after just a abysmal first week performance. So um, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't play any over-unders this week. Nothing really grabbed me. I do like playing over-unders. Nothing really grabbed me this week. Um, you know, maybe the the over 53 and a half in that Atlanta-Dallas game is interesting. I'm just – I'm not picking it. I'm just kind of throwing that out there for any, just for people who like to discuss the over-unders. That's, that's one. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm staying away from over-unders this week and just kind of – just got my three, my three games that I like. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I just reiterate, I know I'm being suckered on this Minnesota plus three. It makes – there's no <laughs> rhyme or reason. Games – you played it, you know, Indianapolis. That game could be played in Fort Wayne. You could play it on the moon. There's no, there's no venue you can play that game where you're telling me the Vikings should be plus three against the Colts. But that's, you know – that's uh, that's setting myself up for the crow eating I'll be having to do next week. But um, uh, as always, appreciate you guys listening. Um, good luck this weekend, and uh, you know, we'll we'll try and get a maybe a, a guest picker on next week. I know we've been talking. Oh about yeah, Brian. Hey, uh, yes, I wanted to mention that we did want to have the great Patty O'Harold on our show this week. He could not make it today. He and I did touch base. It was impossible for him, and we are definitely lined up to have him on next week. The guy's a legend from the Bucknuts days. We're so glad to have him with us uh, here at Buckeye Scoop. And he is planning to be with us next Thursday. So that'll be one to look forward to.
Awesome. Definitely looking forward to it. Always like getting different ideas. I really get a lot out of those threads we have on the message board where you can kind of see everyone's line of thinking on some of these picks. And um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. So we'll see you next week and, and thanks for listening.